stars are right, and that means it's time for another episode of The Whisper in Darkness. I'm your host, the man from Lang, and thank you very much for joining me today on this episode. I am kicking off a new campaign. That's right, we are taking on the Return to the Night of the Zealot campaign. This is the Gathering playthrough, the first of uh, three scenarios in that campaign. Of course, we've got the Gathering, the Midnight Masks, and finally, the Devour Devourer Below. I was uh, hoping to bring you a blind playthrough of this campaign, however, uh, I did uh, end up playing it at Arkham Knights with uh, Mike and Jonathan from the Mythos Busters Busters Iron Man team. They uh, wanted to test their decks uh, before playing in the Iron Man, so uh, we ended up settling on this campaign. Mike was playing Rex, Jonathan was playing Finn, and uh, I was playing Zoe who gave a very good accounting of herself that probably had a little bit to do with the fact that uh, we kind of screwed up on the gathering and had all the ghouls in the deck, so she was very busy uh, seemingly killing a ghoul every turn. Because as uh, if you've played this, you know you're supposed to take some of the ghouls out. But uh, we had them all, and uh, we still managed to uh, do okay. I have only played uh, each of these scenarios once, so it's a little uh, difficult for me to uh, to judge uh, how uh, the Return to the Night of the Zealot uh, box has changed them. Certainly the Gathering uh, seemed to take a little longer than it uh, normally does. Midnight Masks uh, didn't seem all that different, while uh, of course the Devourer Below is always a difficult scenario at the best of times. It can be very swingy. And uh, we uh, didn't get to experience very much of it because we did uh, end up going down to defeat in that. Now, I have been really looking forward to the Return to the Night of the Zealot because this product is uh, seems quite similar to the uh, Nightmare decks that uh, have been released for most of the scenarios in the Lord of the Rings uh, LCG. I have enjoyed playing uh, the Nightmare scenarios quite a bit. And uh, they do several different things. Typically, they uh, make the scenarios more challenging, which uh, certainly the Gathering could use a little bit of boost in the, uh, the uh, challenge department. Uh, once you've played it a few times, it's uh, pretty much a cakewalk. And so uh, I'm hoping these, uh, this product will make it a little bit more challenging. The uh, Nightmare decks also are often used to make scenarios feel a little bit more thematic. They tweak some of the mechanics. So they're, uh, you know, they occur more often during the scenario, and so uh, I expect to see a little bit of that in the, uh, in these uh, scenarios. Certainly, uh, just judging by the some of the cards in them, it looks like they've uh, tweaked the uh, the cult of Umordoth and uh, some of the cultists to make them a little bit more th thematic. And uh, finally, they off these nightmare decks often are used. Uh, to fix exploits that uh, players have been using to beat the scenario in the past, and that forces them, of course, to uh, find new strategies to explore if they uh, want to beat those. So I'm uh, definitely looking forward to uh, to playing these again, and uh, of course I'm looking forward to the Return to the Night of the Dunwich Legacy, sorry, Return to the Dunwich Legacy uh, box, which will be coming out here in a couple months, and uh, that is going to be our first full uh, campaign all eight scenarios are going to be tweaked so uh, I am looking forward to to seeing uh, to seeing how those uh, play out and uh, I'll certainly be bringing you a playthrough of those speaking of playthroughs uh, for the gathering or this campaign I am uh, going with Silas Marsh I have uh, played him a little bit but uh, not all that much but uh, I have found him to be a very uh, powerful investigator this uh, deck is based on uh, one entitled Call of the Sea by Trilkin over at Arkham DB. It's a Dark Horse deck, so you want to keep as uh, few resources uh, as possible. Use that Fire Axe and Baseball Bat for offense. It's got Look What I Found and skills such as Perception, Inquiring Mind, and True Understanding to help gather clues. Silas could certainly use help in that department given his intellect is two. Uh, it's got two copies of Hiding Spot which are in there uh, largely for the Devourer below. I find that if you can drop a hiding spot on the uh, main path, that can make your life a lot easier as you can uh, slip by any cultists that happen to be there and uh, reach the ritual site. As long as there are no hunters about, uh, you uh, then don't really have to worry about those cultists in the future. 
And of course, this is a Silas Marsh deck, so skills are uh, take center stage. There are 16 of them, ranging from uh, Not Without a Fight and Resourceful to uh, Inquiring Mind and Defiance. And of course, for those of you who have not played Silas, his special ability allows you to take a skill that you have committed to the test back to your hand uh, once per round. So uh, you can commit skills to tests, and then if you're going to pass the test anyway, you can yank that skill back to your hand and uh, save it for another test, which is very, very handy. And so uh, I am uh, looking forward to taking this uh, deck for a spin. I did play it against uh, the regular gathering to see how it would do, and if, of course it uh, performed quite well. So it's uh, going to be interesting to compare it to how it does in the Return to the Night of the Zealot, the Gathering. We are set up and uh, ready to go over in Octagon. So uh, let's get this uh, game on the, on the road here. We have uh, Silas Marsh here at the study. This is the Aberrant Gateway. This is the new version. It's a, a three shroud location with one clue. It has the double action draw three cards. Only the lead investigator can activate this ability. And it has the forced effect. When an enemy attempts to spawn at a location that is not in play, put that location into play and spawn that enemy there. This, of course, refers to the uh, Icy Ghoul and the Flesh Eater, which would uh, spawn at the Attic and Cellar, respectively. And then, uh, but if you drew them at the study before, you'd simply discard them because those locations were not on the table. And now the uh, study directs you to put those locations into play so those enemies can spawn. So uh, you can get a few more victory points that way, and uh, it just means more enemies. We also have the Bedroom which is a new location, the guest hall, and the bathroom. So our uh, immediate goal will be to, uh, to grab enough clues from these locations to advance, and then we will get to the uh, traditional hallway attic cellar setup. And uh, if all goes well, we will uh, put the parlor into play later and uh, battle the ghoul priest, who is the big bad uh, at the end of this uh, scenario. Uh, he is, his stats have not changed. He's got 4 Fight, 5 Health, and 4 Evade. He's a humanoid monster ghoul elite. Preys on the highest combat. He's a hunter, and he has Retaliate. So uh, we will need to uh, deal with him. He's worth 2 victory points, and he will hit you for 2 uh, damage and 2 horror if he uh, gets his uh, slimy claws on you. Our agenda is 1A. What's going on? It is late at night. You are holed up in your study, researching the bloody disappearances that have been taking place in the region. A few hours into your research, you hear the sound of strange chanting coming from your parlor down the hall. At the same time, you hear dirt churning as if something were digging beneath the floor. And it has a doom threshold of 3. Act 1A is Mysterious Gateway. This uh, replaces the old Act 1A. As you leap to investigate, the door to your study vanishes before your eyes, leaving behind a strange gateway to another part of your house. There must be a reason why this is happening. And the objective is only investigators in the guest hall may spend the requisite number of clues as a group to advance, and we will need uh, three clues in order to uh, advance to Act 1B. We are playing the gathering on standard difficulty. The skulls, of which there are two, are minus X, where X is the number of ghoul enemies at your location. The cultist, of which there is one, is a minus one, and if you fail, you take a horror. And the tablet is a minus two. If there is a ghoul enemy at your location, you take one damage. So the, uh, the chaos bag is not uh, very difficult uh, in the gathering. That uh, all stays the same. So uh, at least the Chaos Bag isn't going to be uh, that bad uh, for this particular scenario. Now I uh, have not drawn my, uh, my weakness, so let's do that now. We will shuffle them up and see what our weakness for this uh, campaign will be. It is Dark Pact. Oh wow, I haven't uh, played with this one before. It's a Pact, uh, campaign mode only. Deal 2 damage to an investigator at your location. It has the forced effect when the game ends or you are eliminated. If Dark Pact is still in your hand, remove Dark Pact from your deck, 
search the collection for the price of failure and uh, add it to your deck. So it uh, looks like with this weakness, if we draw it, we do want to try to, uh, to play it. It uh, costs two uh, resources to put that into play. So uh, that is, uh, that's nasty. So you get to pay two resources and take two damage. That is a double whammy. And then uh, if it's still in your hand at the end of the game, you have to put it, uh, change it, uh, swap it out, sorry, for the price of failure. So we will shuffle that into our deck. I think we're ready to draw our opening hand. So we'll do that now. This is a Dark Horse deck, so we will be looking for Dark Horse in our opening hand. We also uh, would like some sort of weapon, preferably a fire axe, although I will take a baseball bat if I have to. And of course, we could also use uh, Peter Sylvester. Uh, we'd like to get him into play as quickly as possible because uh, we are tackling this scenario with uh, Silas, who has two willpower, and there are a lot of cards in the uh, encounter deck that do target willpower. So we're at a bit of a disadvantage there. So we will need Peter to, uh, to help us out there if we take horror. And uh, ultimately, if we do uh, get through this scenario, it'd be nice to upgrade to the level uh, two version of Peter Sylvester so we get that uh, extra willpower so he would, Silas would be at three. So let's draw our opening hand here. We will uh, shuffle up our deck one more time and get started. So in our opening hand, we have... There is a Guts, there is a Hiding Spot, an Unexpected Courage, a Perception, and Dark Horse. All right, well, we don't need the Guts. The Actually, the Guts I might keep. I think I'm going to keep the Guts. Normally, I would, uh, I'd uh, pitch that for something better, but we are uh, low on willpower, so it may come in handy. We'll uh, discard the... Uh, the uh, unexpected courage and the perception. So we're just keeping the dark horse and the guts. We'll draw three. There's another copy of dark horse. A not without a fight and an unexpected courage. It always seems when you uh, when you mulligan away uh, one of those unexpected courages, you always draw a second one. So it's like you haven't uh, done anything. However, we did get our dark horse, so that will be nice. We can get that uh, that. Uh, going for us pretty quickly. Uh, we're going to need to, uh, we can spend three resources on it right away, but that will leave us with two resources, so we need to find a way to get rid of those. So let's get our three actions and let's get this game underway. First action, of course, will be to uh, spend three resources and uh, put Dark Horse into play. Now, we need to somehow get rid of two resources so our uh, our Dark Horse bonuses come online. I'm uh, content to draw a couple cards here. I'd like to see uh, a Fire Axe or a Peter Sylvester, so let's see what we can get. We will draw... There is our Dark Pact. Well, right off the bat, we draw our weakness. But uh, we have time to uh, play that. And let's draw again. There is a true understanding, so if we commit that skill uh, to a skill test from an, a printed ability on a scenario card, if the test is successful, we can discover a clue at our location. That's very handy. That's a way for uh, Silas to cheat clues because he does have an intellect of two. So that is going to do it for our turn. There are no enemies in play. We will draw a card. There is a perception, and we have the choice of a resource or not, and I am not going to be taking a resource. Uh, this turn. We will uh, add a doom. Uh, one doom of three so far. Turn two and our first encounter card is going to be the Zealot's Seal. This is a, one of the new uh, encounter cards, new treachery included in the Return to the Night of the Zealot. It has the uh, Hex trait and Revelation. Each investigator with three or fewer cards in hand must take one damage and one horror. Each investigator with four or more cards in hand must test Willpower 2. Each investigator who fails must discard two cards at random. 
from his or her hand. Well, I'm not too worried about random discards because that is a good way to get rid of our weakness. So we'll uh, we'll just take this test straight up to uh, versus two. Chaos bag says minus two. So we do fail. So we are going to have to discard two cards at random. We pitch the true understanding. I would have liked to have kept that and the guts. Wow, that was painful. Wish I'd kept the guts, but uh, oh well, we'll have to do without it. And uh, that will be the mythos phase. So we get our three actions again. No sign of a fire axe yet or a baseball bat or Peter. So we will, uh, and we are, and our uh, dark horse bonuses are not uh, operating yet. So we need to find a way to get those down. I'm just going to draw some more cards here because I really need to... Uh, to spend those resources. There's our fire axe. All right. Good stuff. Okay, so first action, we drew our fire axe. Let's play the fire axe. That brings us down to one resource. And as our second action, we can now, I think we can investigate the study. We are a two versus three, but we do have this perception that'll get us another card. So we will go uh, four versus three. Chaos Bag says there's a skull that is a zero right now. So we do discover that clue and we get to draw a card, which is a look what I found. That's awfully nice. If we can, uh, if we run into one of those uh, locations with two clues or uh, one of those high shroud locations. So we have one action left. We'll uh, continue here. We'll move over to the guest hall. Flip that over. Guest hall is a one shroud location with uh, zero clues and uh, investigators in this location cannot take draw actions. So uh, no drawing cards for us here. That will do it for my turn. There are no enemies in play, so I will draw a card. There's a lucky. Uh, do I want to gain a resource? That's a good question. Um, I think I'm going to gain a resource. We'll get that uh, just so we can use this. Look what I found uh, if we uh, run into a two uh, location with two clues on it. We will add a doom. We're at two of three. Turn three, our encounter card is there's a rotting remains. This is bad news for, uh, for um, Silas. Let's use that unexpected courage. We will commit that. That will give us a four versus three. Chaos bag says minus two. So we uh, drop to two versus three. So we will take a horror. I'm hoping we get Peter out here pretty quickly because we need uh, we need that sanity soak. Let's get our three actions back. Let's head up to the bedroom, first of all. First action gone. We'll flip that over. Bedroom is a two shroud location with one clue. It has the forced effect. After you fail a skill test while investigating the bedroom, discard one card at random from your hand. All right, we are a two versus two here. So let's uh, use our second action to investigate. Chaos bag says, well, the chaos bag is not working yet. Let's see, chaos bag says minus three. So we are, uh, we are at a zero. So we failed a skill test by two or less. So we can use our, uh, we can play our, uh, our, a, uh, look what I found. I'm blanking on names here. So we'll spend the two resources there and grab this clue. Now, after we fail a skill test while investigating the bedroom, discard one card from your hand. Okay, so we did fail a skill test, but we get to order the effects. Oh, no, we don't. That's a forced effect. So that comes first. Okay, we need to take a step back here. 
because we may have to discard the, uh, the look what I found. Let's uh, random discard. There goes our uh, not without a fight. So we do, we can play the, uh, the look what I found to grab that clue. We have one action remaining. We will move back to the, uh, the guest hall. No enemies in play, so we'll simply draw a card. There's an inquiring mind. And uh, do we want a resource? I don't think we do want a resource this time around. And we will add a doom. Three of three, we are advancing. So we will uh, flip over our agenda. Agenda 1B is a lapse in time. Your house continues to change before your very eyes. The walls have decayed and the ground in many rooms has turned to dirt. It is almost as if you have been transported somewhere else entirely, although every now and again you recognize elements of your former home. The uh, lead investigator must decide choose one. Either each investigator discards one card at random from his or her hand, or the lead investigator takes two horror. Uh, no, we're not taking two horror. Silas only has five sanity, so that would be bad news. I don't mind discarding the card in my hand. Hopefully we'll hit our weakness. Let's uh, see if we have any luck. No, we lose our lucky instead. That's too bad. Agenda 2A is Rise of the Ghouls. The floor beneath you is giving way, and you see a vast network of tunnels twisting into the darkness below. Shapes and silhouettes of strange creatures move swiftly through the tunnels, trying to find a way up. You probably don't want to be here when they do. All right, so we will draw an encounter card, and it is a rats. Swarm of rats, hunter, they're weak. We know what they do. We will uh, gain our three actions. First action will be just to kill the rats. We have a uh, combat. We have no resources now, so our combat is up to five. So five versus one, chaos bag says zero, so the rats are dead. Just like that. Second action, we will move to the bathroom. We will flip that over. Bathroom is a one shroud location with one clue. It has the forced effect. After you reveal a skull cultist tablet or a tentacle symbol while investigating the bathroom, lose all remaining actions and end your turn. We have one action remaining, so I am going to try to uh, investigate we are a three versus one Let's see what the chaos bag says chaos bag says skull so that is a zero but uh, we do lose all remaining actions and end our turn but that is fine because we uh, that was our last action anyway we do get the clue move on to the enemy phase there are no enemies yet there are plenty of ghouls in that encounter deck we have yet to encounter one though so we will draw a card. There is uh, Silas's signature skill, nautical prowess. It has a uh, willpower, intellect, and wild skill icons, the innate developed traits. Silas Marsh deck only. It's the replacement since this is the Silas from the book. If a chaos token with a negative modifier is revealed during this test, either draw one card or nautical prowess gains two wild icons. So that's, uh, that's pretty sweet. All right. Do we gain a resource? Uh, nope, don't see any reason to do that. We will simply add a doom and go on to turn five. Our encounter card is, oh, there's a ghoul. This is one of the new ghouls. This is the Grave Eater. He's got uh, two fight, two health, and two evade. Humanoid monster ghoul. He has the forced effect after Grave Eater attacks you. Discard one card at random from your hand. Well, you've probably seen the uh, how they uh, changed up the gathering here from a thematic standpoint. They're really ramped up that discard one card at random uh, deal, both uh, on the enemies as well as the agenda deck, So, uh, as well as the encounter cards. I believe there are some that also discard at random there. So that's uh, that does put some pressure on your hand if you're uh, not careful, if you're unable to pass those tests. I don't expect this Grave Eater will give us uh, too much trouble. Uh, 
the uh, bathrooms text only applies if we're investigating the bathroom, so that doesn't matter. We are a five versus two, and we'll do an extra damage with our uh, our fire axe. So let's see if we can't kill this guy in one shot. Chaos bag says minus one, no problem. The uh, grave eater goes down. We will move up. We will move back to the guest hall, and I believe we are ready to advance. We will spend uh, our three clues and we will advance to Act 1B. Whoop. There we go. Act 1B is breaking the wall. The layout of your home is vastly different from its usual structure. Somehow your guest hall seems to have looped around on itself and you are stuck with no way to enter the main hallway near the front of the house. You notice that the wall between the guest bedroom and the bathroom is rotted and stained with what appears to be old blood. With no other way to proceed, you have no choice but to bust through the weak, rotted wall. So we put, a play, put into play the set-aside hole-in-the-wall location. Here is our hole-in-the-wall. This is a, a new one here, since they did change the act. Choose an investigator in the guest hall, obviously Silas. The chosen investigator immediately moves into the hole in the wall and reveals it. Then he or she must test willpower four. For each point that investigator fails by, he or she must discard a random card from his or her hand. There we go again. So let's, uh, so we move, we reveal the uh, hallway, so we've broken through the hall, hole in the wall and entered the hallway. It's a one shroud location with zero clues and it has the forced effect. After you reveal this location, put the set aside attic cellar and uh, parlor locations into play. So we will grab our parlor from over here and the attic and cellar are chosen at random. So I have them here and we will shuffle those up and uh, see how we do. There is our attic for the game. And if we have a cellar, is the cellar next? Nope, there's the other attic, so we will take this cellar. All right. So far, so good. Silas only has taken one horror. Uh, we do have to do this uh, test, though. Now, do I commit to this test? We could get rid of our weakness. We do have an inquiring mind and nautical prowess, both of which I kind of would like to keep. So if I, I can only commit the nautical prowess, that would give me, uh, we'd be three, four, five versus four. And if we draw a negative, I could double up on it or pull it back to my hand. So let's see what we uh, get from the chaos bag. Chaos bag says, Elder sign. Well, there you go. That's even better. That is a plus zero, and uh, you may commit a skill from your discard pile to this test. After this test ends, return that skill to your hand instead of discarding it. Let's see what we have in our uh, discard pile. I believe we have a guts in here that we could use, or an unexpected courage, or the true understanding because that is a card printed on a on a scenario card um, I like the uh, I think I'm gonna take the unexpected courage just because it's a little more versatile than the than the guts so we can commit that to the test so we easily pass this test now I can use uh, Silas's ability to pull this nautical prowess back to my hand because we uh, are committing the unexpected courage to this test so we will pull uh, that back as well so we do get uh, both we do pass the test and we get both of those skills back which is very handy all right uh, we have one action remaining after all of this uh, we have to advance to uh, act 2a the barrier Everybody should be familiar with this one. A glowing barrier blocks the path to your parlor. As you move toward it, intense heat forces you to back away. 
Picking up a handful of dirt, you toss it at the barrier and watch in horror as the dirt incinerates. Perhaps there's something in the cellar or attic that can help. And our objective is, when the round ends, investigators in the hallway may as a group spend the requisite number of clues to advance. We do have the one action remaining. We are going to use it to, uh, we'll tackle the uh, attic first since it's a little easier than the cellar. It is, oh, it's a new attic. We got the new attic. It's a three shroud location with one clue. Forced after you reveal the attic, put the set aside far above your house location into play. So we will find our, there's our far above the house. This is new. So that comes into play, and there are no victory points on this attic. Presumably they're at the far above our house, so we will have to go there to get any victory points uh, for these locations. All right, well, that's, uh, that's going to do it for our turn. There are no uh, enemies in play, so we will simply draw a card. There's Pete. Okay, we're going to definitely gain a resource this turn. And probably gain two resources next turn to uh, get him into play. Okay, we are adding a doom. It's turn six. Our encounter card for this uh, oh, is the ghoul from the depths. This is one of the new ghouls. He's got to three fight, four health, and two evade. Humanoid monster ghoul spawns in the bathroom, and he has retaliate. So he's down here. He's worth a victory point and will hit you for one damage and one horror. Okay, well, we've got some victory points on the table. I'm going to gain my three actions. My first action is going to be to move over here too far above the house. And we will flip that over. Far above the house is a two shroud location with one clue forced after you reveal, oh, it's, no, it's Field of Graves. Sorry, I'm, I assumed it the back and the front were the same. It's Field of Graves, two shroud location, one clue forced after you reveal Field of Graves. Test four willpower for each uh, point you fail by. Discard one card at random from each player's hand. I do not like that. So I am going to... Uh, commit nautical prowess to that, and I really want to keep Peter. Um, hmm. Nautical prowess would see us. We're at two, three, four versus four. We're going to need a little more than that, so we're going to go six versus four. Chaos bag says there's the auto fail, like. Uh, like clockwork. How did I know I was going to pull that? It just seemed like now's the time. Now's the time you're going to pull the, that. We do. Uh, we can use our ability to pull something back. I'm going to pull the nautical prowess back. Uh, we are going to have to discard most of our hand, which is really unfortunate. Um, we did fail by four, so uh, we are going to discard a bunch of cards here. That is really unfortunate for us. Uh, so let's do four random discards. We may be able to get rid of our weakness. That's about the only consolation we can take from this. There goes our weakness. Uh, Dark Pact is gone. We lose our Inquiring Mind. We lose Peter, of course, and we lose Dark Horse. So we did, uh, we did keep the nautical prowess that we pulled back to our hand uh, on that test. So that is, uh, that is okay, I guess. Now, what do we do now? We have, we are a two versus two. We have that resource now for Peter who is not around anymore, unfortunately. Um, and I have no way of spending it. That uh, really hurt us in a bad way. We're two versus two. We might as well just investigate. I've got two actions left, so we'll go two versus two. 
the chaos bag gives us a minus two and we will do it one more time and the chaos bag gives us an elder sign okay well we can commit a card let's take a look at all the cards in our discard pile uh, it has to be a skill so we do uh, uh, return a skill uh, after this test ends okay so we do get a skill um, I do want I think we'll commit the perception so we will get that perception back and I believe we draw a card since this test is successful after this test ends yeah so we do get to draw a card for it right away as well so there is our weakness, of course. Another weakness. This is uh, Dreams of the Deep, uh, the Deep Gate. It's a skill, but it has two wild icons, but these are negative wild icons. It's got the curse trait, Silas Marsh deck only replacement. This skill's icons subtract from your skill value instead of adding to it. If this skill test fails, return this skill to your hand. If uh, Dreams of the Deep is in your hand, at the end of your turn, reveal it and take two damage. So unfortunately, we are going to take two damage because of that uh, very unlucky pull with the Perception. So we will uh, do that now. Very unfortunate there. All right, well, we need... How many more clues do we need? We need three clues to advance. We've got one of them. So we will draw a card. There is a, an inquiring mind. Uh, we're not taking a resource. And we will simply add a doom. Three of seven on agenda 2A. It is turn seven and our encounter card this time is chill from below. Test three... Uh, um, willpower for each point you fail by you must discard one card at random from your hand again for each card you cannot discard take one damage so we will commit the uh, dreams of the deep as well as our nautical prowess so we are going two versus three and these two will cancel each other out uh, we don't have anything else we can do uh, so hopefully we draw a negative and we get to two more on the prowess. Let's see. Chaos Bag says minus four. That's not quite what we needed. Uh, if a Chaos token with a negative modifier is revealed during this test, either draw one card or Nautical Prowess gains two wild icons. We are going to fail this test, uh, I think, regardless. Yes, we are. So I'm going to pull Nautical Prowess back to our hand. And, of course, Dreams of the Deep will return to our hand. And we will have to move. Uh, we are going to have to... For each point you fail by, you must discard one card at random from your hand. So when do these cards come back to my hand? If this skill test fails, return it to your hand. Okay, so the timing on this is kind of important. All right, well, I have uh, I needed to look up that rule quickly. So basically the timing is if this skill test fails, happens before we uh, trigger the chill from below. So what happens is I can pull the nautical prowess back to my hand and then the dreams comes back to my hand because we failed by four, or sorry, failed by, uh, we really failed by three. So uh, we have to discard a card at random from our hand for each point we failed by. So we're discarding three cards. The good thing is though that our dreams of the deep could be one of them. So let's see if that uh, does happen. There's an inquiring mind. There is the perception, and oh no, we kept the dreams of the deep. There goes our nautical prowess. So uh, we do have dreams of the deep, and we are going to take a uh, probably take a horror at the end of this uh, two damage at the end of this turn because we have uh, no way of uh, showing our hand or getting rid of it. 
Okay, well, we were we knew we were vulnerable to uh, willpower checks going into this, and uh, we have certainly had a few unfortunate ones that have gutted our hand. Uh, we have no way of getting rid of that Dreams of the Deep at the moment, so we are probably going to have to spend a turn just drawing some cards and uh, take the damage. So let's do that. We will uh, draw one. There is a baseball bat, and we will get a lucky. Okay, so we've got, we drew three cards. Um, when does this in your hand at the end of your turn? We take two damage. All right, and that is it. No enemies moving in the enemy phase, so we will just draw another card. There is our hiding spot, and we will uh, add a doom. Four of seven, turn eight. We get another the Zealot Seal. Each investigator with three or fewer cards in hand must take one damage in horror. That is not us. Each investigator with four or more cards in hand tests two. Each investigator who fails must discard two cards at random from his or her hand. I would like to fail this, actually. Let's see. We're just going to go two versus two. Chaos Bag gives us a zero, of course, so we, uh, we do pass. Hooray. Uh, I wanted to fail that one just so we could try again to get rid of the dreams of the deep, but uh, no such luck. We will get our three actions. I think we need to get our uh, get moving here because this is uh, we're per getting pretty close to uh, this flipping to uh, agenda two B, and then the ghouls start moving around and it become and adding doom, and so uh, agenda three A can uh, rocket through pretty quickly. I'm going to take an action to move to the um, the attic. Now we would be a two versus three there. If we play the Dreams of the Deep, we'd be zero versus three. And then if we played the Lucky, we'd pop up to one versus three. So as long as if we drew a zero, we'd be okay. I gotta get rid of this Dreams of the Deep, so this is gonna be kind of risky, but we'll we'll just have to do it. So we'll take an action, we'll, we'll commit the Dreams, we'll commit the Defiance. Let's call Tablets. Yeah, Tablets are good. We'll call Tablets. So we are a... Uh, two versus three and then this makes us the dreams of the deep makes us a zero versus three the defiance gives us one versus three and we do have a lucky so let's see what the chaos bag says chaos bag gives us a zero okay so that gives us an opportunity to play our lucky all right we play our lucky and uh, that takes care of the Dreams of the Deep. We do pass the skill test, and uh, the skill test did not fail. Let's just calculate that again. So we were at uh, 2 minus 2 is 0, plus 1 is 1 versus 3. We drew a 0, which was 1 versus 3. We played our lucky to be 3 versus 3, so we are okay. All right. Whew. That was uh, glad to see that get out of the way. And we have one more action left, so we will drop back down to the hallway. That is going to do it for our turn. There are no enemies in play. We get a true understanding. That uh, may help us down at uh, the attic, or sorry, the cellar. Uh, we do have two clues. We need one more clue. I'm not sure if we're going to have the time to grab. If this is not the regular cellar, I'm not sure if we'll have time to go to uh, deep below our house to get another victory point. So we may have to settle for this ghoul of the depths, or from the depths here, when he comes calling. All right, let's add a... Uh, we're not taking a resource. We will add a doom. Five of seven, turn nine. Our encounter card is a grave eater. There is another Grave Eater, 2-2-2, two, 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 Humanoid Monster Ghoul. After he attacks us, we discard a card at random from our hand. We should be, <laughs> if we're not familiar with that effect by now, uh, 
I think the designers are beating us over the head with it at this point. We've seen it so many times. It does a damage and a horror. We shouldn't have too much trouble taking this guy out. We are a five versus a two. So with our first action, we will be uh, taking a crack at him. Chaos Bag says minus one. That is uh, good enough to kill the, uh, the Grave Eater. We have two actions remaining, and we need to grab a clue. We need one more clue. So let's check out the uh, cellar. Oh, that's interesting. The attic, you don't take the horror anymore if it's uh, if you use that other attic, but you do take you do get hit by that field of graves. So let's see what our uh, cellar is. Our cellar is uh, after you put the cellar and after you reveal the cellar, put the set aside deep below your house location into play, and it's got a clue. All right. Well, we put the deep below our house into play. So we're going to have to make a choice now. We can, I think we, well, we've, we're three versus two here, so we can grab a clue for sure. Are we set up to fight the ghoul priest? Not really. We don't have uh, any, um, we do not have any combat tricks that we can use besides the baseball bat. Uh, let's see, do we move? Do we get greedy? Let's get greedy. We've still got two turns. We'll move to deep below our house. We flip that over. We find the ghoul pits. Ooh, scary. It's a four shroud location with one clue and it has the forced effect. After you reveal the ghoul pits, test three agility. Hey, an agility test. We have a chance at that one. For each point you fail by, search the encounter deck and discard pile for a copy of Swarm of Rats and draw it. Shuffle the encounter deck and it's worth a victory point. For each point you fail by, search the encounter deck and discard pile for a swarm. So you just get swarmed. Oh, that's hilarious. Okay, so we are a three versus four. We can commit this true understanding to the test since it is a scenario card. So we can go four versus four. And we can commit this uh, hiding spot since uh, we won't need it. So we're going, so we are, we're a five, six, seven, eight versus three. I like our odds here. Chaos Bag gives us a plus one just to uh, to cement it. And we do get to trigger uh, true understanding. If this skill test is successful, discover one clue at your location. So that uh, we will grab that clue. And uh, that saves us a huge amount of time. That uh, four shroud location was going to be very difficult for Silas to crack. But uh, we did get we did get it with that true understanding. I knew that card was good. We do grab the clue and uh, now we have enough to advance to face the ghoul priest. All right, uh, that was our turn. So we will... Uh, did we... Oh, that was, uh, yeah, that was the uh, forced after we revealed the ghoul pits. Okay, so we're okay. Um... Yeah, we just go to our uh, upkeep. There's a defiance, not uh, as helpful as uh, a not without a fight would be. I just want to check my uh, my discard pile here. Do we have both of them in the discard pile? That is my question. There is one. There is only one in the discard pile, so we do have another not without a fight in our deck. Good stuff. All right. We're not going to gain a resource. We will add a doom. Six of seven on turn 10. Our, our encounter uh, is the corpse hungry ghoul. He's got uh, four combat, three health, and uh, three agility. Monster ghoul humanoid spawns in the bedroom. So we've got both of our ghouls that uh, the new ghouls that spawn. This guy is a hunter. 
he's worth a victory point and he does two uh, damage and two horror so we will need to deal with him before we can get to the ghoul priest all right so he is going to show up here next turn i can go one two i could move cellar hallway guest hall but then i'm leaving myself open to the hungry corpse hungry ghoul but i could move in next turn and then kill him if we get to the hallway i think that's what we're going to have to do get our three actions first action move back to the cellar second action move up to the hallway third action we will draw a card there's another fire axe okay not quite what i want i need my skills now in order to combat the uh, ghoul priest and that will be my turn so we'll go to the enemy phase the uh, corpse hungry ghoul will hunt down to uh, the guest hall and we will have to deal with him next turn uh, he's only got three health so two wax with the axe should do it all right we'll go to our upkeep we'll draw a card there's an unexpected courage okay that's uh, what we want to see uh, we don't need a resource to deal with the corpse hungry ghoul so we will simply add a doom we are advancing this turn so we will flip the over to agenda 2b the tunnels below a feral beast roughly humanoid with a canine cast and hooves for feet tears through the ground in front of you below the floor you can see a vast tunnels beneath your house fiendish howling echoes from deep within the the underground caverns shuffle the encounter discard pile into the encounter deck discard cards from the top of the encounter deck until a ghoul enemy is discarded the lead investigator draws that enemy so we have to shuffle encounter discard pile and discard until we get a ghoul probably one of these grave eaters but we'll see shuffle those all into the deck and we start discarding there's a grave eater right off the bat so he is going to hang out with us at our location and we advance to agenda 3a they're getting out you hear a crazed howl outside and suddenly all the creatures turn their attention to that sound they rush to escape the house, breaking down doors and clawing at everything in their way. And it has the forced effect. At the end of the enemy phase, each unengaged ghoul enemy moves one location toward the parlor. At the end of the round, place one doom on this agenda for each ghoul enemy in the hallway or parlor. So this is interesting. So when does this happen? At the end of the round. Okay, so at the end of the round, the ghouls are going to place a token. Oh, but they just, they just hang out in the parlor. Okay, so we do need to kill this guy. All right, he hits for two and two. Oh, that hurts. The corpse-hungry ghoul... But we could move in, evade, but we're going to get the ghoul from the depths as well. We're going to have a bunch of ghouls on our hands here. Not liking this. All right, well, we have to draw an encounter card, uh, so let's see what we get. There's an ancient evil, so uh, just like Arkham Knights, we're going to rocket through this agenda. One of ten already on there. All right, so we get our three actions. Well, we need to kill this uh, this ghoul first. Uh, the Grave Eater. So we are a five versus two. Chaos Bag says minus three. That's fine. So he will die. Okay, so we have two actions remaining. Uh, I can move in and evade the Corpse Hungry Ghoul, in which case I would take damage from the Ghoul from the Depths, which is a lot better. 
it's only one and one. So that's what we're going to do. We'll use an action to move in to the guest hall and engage the corpse hungry ghoul. And then we are going to try to evade it. We are a, a five versus three. That's awfully good. Uh, we're going to commit this uh, defiance. We'll call, uh, what do we want? Uh, tablets again. Chaos bag says zero. Uh, it turns out I don't need the defiance, so I'm going to pull it back. And uh, he is evaded. Okay. During the enemy phase, Oh, at the end of the enemy phase, each unengaged en ghoul enemy moves. Okay, so we don't take damage from the ghoul from the depths. Okay, good. So he will engage us at the end of the enemy phase. Now we go to upkeep. The corpse-hungry ghoul will ready, and he will engage us as well. And... Then at the end of the round, place each, uh, a doom on the agenda for each ghoul enemy in the hallway or parlor. There are none, so we just get to draw a card. There's a uh, not without a fight. Nice to see that. I think we are in good shape to face the ghoul priest uh, if we uh, can get there. And let's see. We uh, do not need a resource. We will simply add a doom. It's turn 12. Encounter card is going to be Dissonant Voices. That's okay by me. No assets or events, but uh, this is Silas. Silas doesn't care about assets or events. All he cares about is his axe. And it's time to do some chopping. Let's, uh, we get our three actions. This Corpse Hungry Ghoul is the most uh, dangerous threat here. So we are a uh, Five versus four, we are going to commit the, uh, what do we commit? Five versus four, I don't want to commit too much because I want to save something for the, uh, the ghoul priest, but uh, we could go six versus four with the defiance and the unexpected courage. Oh, I could have taken a resource last round. Yeah, I should have taken a resource. What am I thinking? Okay, so we took a resource last round. I'm retconning this a little bit just because we, if I was paying attention, I know I'm fighting enemies this round, so a resource is not a bad deal. Okay, so we will use that resource to get uh, plus two combat for this skill test. And so we are a five, six, seven, eight with the defiance versus four. Chaos bag says zero, so we do hit. Now we can pull this defiance back, but I'm not going to do it. Uh, so we will do two damage. All right, now we have to go five versus four. We can commit the baseball bat and our other fire axe. So five, six, seven versus four. Chaos bag says zero again so the corpse hungry ghoul is dead nice to see him gone add him to the victory display we have one more action remaining and we will use it to attack the ghoul from the depths we'll put some damage on him to finish him off next turn so we are five versus three i think i'm going to commit I'll commit the unexpected courage, and we can pull it back if we need to. Uh, five, six, seven versus three. Chaos bag says skull. That's going to be a minus one, so we can pull that unexpected courage back to our hand and still do the damage to the ghoul. Ghoul attack me back for a damage and a horror, and that will be my turn. So we will draw a card. There's a look what I found. That's not going to be of much use. I'm going to gain a resource because uh, we are fighting enemies. I'm paying attention now to that. 
Uh, end of the round, we discard Dissonant Voices. We will add a Doom. Three of ten, draw a card. Rats. And I mean rats. We did draw the Swarm of Rats. One, one, threes, Hunters, but uh, they're more of a speed bump than anything at this point. So we get our three actions. Uh, let's just kill the rats first off. So we are going five. Oh, no, we're going four versus one. We get a cultist. That is minus one. If you fail, take a horror. We did not fail. So the rats die. And our second action will be we are going to use that resource we gained last turn to go uh, five, six, seven versus three. I like our odds. Chaos Bag gives us a, a tentacle for Pete's sakes. That guy has Retaliate, of course, so we do get hit for another damage and horror. Nothing we can do about that. Uh, we are going... Whoops. You go back there. All right, we are going five versus three again. I'm going to commit the Unexpected Courage, and we will draw minus one so I can pull that unexpected courage back to my hand and this guy will die all right so we add him to the victory display so so far we've got four victory points not too bad and that was our turn so uh, no uh, I think we could finish off the ghoul priest in two turns from now so uh, let's hope that happens We'll draw a card. I'm going to gain a resource. And we will add a doom. Four of ten. Our encounter card is the chill from below. Test three. For each point you fail by, we must discard a card at random from your hand. For each card you cannot discard, take a damage. Uh, this seems a good time to commit that unexpected courage. So we are going to go uh, 2, 3, 4 versus 3. Yeah, we're going to go 4 versus 3. Chaos Bag says minus 4. What the hell, Chaos Bag? So we're 0 versus 3, so we lose 3 cards. There goes our second out of... Uh, not without a fight. I was hoping we'd be able to keep that for uh, some time to come. Unfortunately, we're discarding three cards at random. Ouch. Bad timing on that one. However, that is the encounter card. We didn't bring any more ghouls out, so we don't have to worry about those. Uh, we're going to move to the hallway as our first action. We're just going to try to recover our hand a little bit here. There's a resourceful. That is very nice to see. And a guts. So with that resourceful, we can pull back the knot without a fight and uh, hopefully uh, hopefully deal some, uh, be able to kill this ghoul priest. Okay, so what do we need to do? We need to be able to kill the ghoul priest in one turn. We get to draw a card. There's another resourceful. Wow, that is so nice. Holy cow. Okay, so we could uh, grab two copies of Not Without a Fight, and that should be enough to kill the Ghoul Priest. Uh, we will gain a resource again, and I think we are going to trigger when the round ends, investigators in the hallway may spend clues as a group. So we will do that. Not resources, clues. So we will spend three clues as a group, and to advance, we advance to Act 2B, Breaking the Barrier. Using the barrel from the attic, you carry ice and snow from the cellar and hurl it at the barrier. The barrier sparks and shudders as it consumes the ice, then hisses and fades out of existence. The barrier blocking passage into the parlor has vanished. Reveal the parlor. And as we all know, Parlor is a two-shroud location with zero clues. It has the action resign. This is too much for me. You run out of the front door, fleeing in panic. And uh, while Lita Chandler is not controlled by a player, she gains action uh, parlay. Test four. Uh, 
intellect if you succeed take control of Lita Chandler we will not be doing that uh, anytime soon because we've got a ghoul priest to deal with he spawns in the hallway and uh, as a result of that he is going to uh, uh, first we need to advance to act 3a what have you done a woman with a torch stands in your parlor, a glimmer of hatred in her eyes. What have you done to my barrier? She screams, furious. Before you can answer, a ghastly wail sounds behind you, and a creature wearing robes and a deer skull mask tears through the wall, advancing toward you. Objective, if the ghoul priest is defeated, advance. Now, the ghoul priest spawns before this forced effect on their getting out triggers, so we do have to place a doom on, uh, on our agenda and then place another doom on it for, it, for the mythos phase. So uh, this is going to rock it up. We have to kill this ghoul priest uh, toot sweet here. It's turn 15. Our encounter card is going to be a crypt eater. After he attacks us, we discard a card at random from our hand. I am hoping not to have to deal with that because we are simply going to try to kill this uh, simply going to try to kill the ghoul priest uh, in uh, three shots here. We get three actions. All right, we are going to use the two resources. First off, so we are four five from dark horse six seven eight nine versus four i'm going to commit both of these uh resourcefuls so we can go 11 versus uh, four only the auto fail let's see if that happens minus one nope so we will uh, do two damage to the ghoul priest now, we can use these to uh, choose a card not named Resourceful. So we will uh, look at our deck. Oh, we are getting close to decking ourselves here. Uh, we will take the Not Without a Fight and the Not Without a Fight with our Resourcefuls. Actually, this uh, that ghoul eater, uh, grave eater showing up is actually kind of good because he will give us an additional uh, bonus on our not without a fight checks. Okay, so we are going. That was our first action. Second action, we are going to go. We're going to commit both not without a fights. Remember that we can pull one back to our hand for next attack. So we are at four. Uh, five from Dark Horse, uh, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. There's a skull. That's a minus two. So uh, we have more than enough to uh, to hit the Ghoul Priest. We will pull the one. Re we will pull the one knot without a fight back to our hand, so we can use it again. Ghoul Priest takes two damage, and then we're just going to try and kill him. Not without a fight again. So four, five with Dark Horse, six, seven, eight with not without a fight. Chaos Bag says zero. All right. Thanks, Chaos Bag. And the Ghoul Priest goes down. Just like that. I love Silas when he can do that sort of stuff. That that makes Silas really fun when you can you get to pull those skills back and do all those fancy tricks and stuff like that. That's awesome. So the ghoul priest is defeated, and we get to uh, advance Act 3B to 3B if the ghoul priest is defeated, advance. And Act 3B is defending the home. When the robed creature falls, the fiendish swarm burrows back into the ground, and the chaos of the house quiets, but the stranger in your parlor doesn't seem relieved. You broke my seal that was set to trap the ghouls within. She raises her torch. Now we must take more direct measures and burn this hell pit to the ground. The lead investigator must decide. Choose one. It was never much of a home. Burn it down, R1. And this hell pit is my home. No way are we burning. Burning it. R2. Well... 
we know what happens if we burn the house down, and it, uh, it does give Silas a mental trauma. So ideally, we should probably keep the home standing so he doesn't suffer the mental trauma. However, however, I think how, how Silas would live on a houseboat or his boat. He wouldn't live in this house. He doesn't care. He's just going to burn it down. So we'll take the we'll take the mental trauma and uh, just burn this uh, burn this house that he wasn't using anyway. I mean, he's got his he uses his boat as his house. He sleeps out on the ocean. That's where he's he feels most at home. So we will take the mental trauma. And that is uh, the gathering or return to the gathering, I should say. Uh, it does make the uh, the gathering a lot longer. Normally, I would uh, defeat the ghoul priest before we get to Agenda 3A. Uh, long before that, usually, sometimes in the middle of uh, Agenda 2A. So the fact that we're on Agenda 3A means that the game is uh, substantially longer. Uh, we did have to go uh, to the uh, Field of Graves and the Ghoul Pits to get uh, those clues. We could have picked up clues at the cellar and the attic as well, so we didn't have to go as far. But we decided to be a little bit greedy and uh, go for the victory points. We did uh, fairly well in terms of victory points. We got uh, both of the new ghouls for one each, both of the new locations for four, we got the uh, priest for six, and we got the priest for six. The only ones we were meet at missing are the flesh eater and the icy ghoul, but uh, I think to wait around for those would have uh, would have been very costly. Uh, I don't think we would have made it because uh, this grave eater, of course, he's going to add a doom, so we'd be at seven. Then we'd have to add another doom, so we're at eight. There's Ancient Evils in the encounter deck, which means you could be at 9 within a turn, and suddenly a game that looked like it was going to be, uh, you could stroll to victory, suddenly you are in deep trouble. So, uh, yeah, I like what, uh, I like how ret the uh, return cards um, sort of, they beef up that discard uh, cards at random from your hand. Uh, they be really beef up that mechanic. Uh, almost to the point of overkill, where you simply every card you draw is uh, discarding cards from your hand unless you pass willpower tests. And for somebody like Silas, that's not ideal because uh, his willpower is pretty low at two. But uh, we did uh, lose quite a few cards this game, but we did manage to still uh, to still pull out the the victory, which is nice. And uh, we will continue the campaign in. Uh, in the Midnight Masks, and uh, that has some uh, interesting, uh, interesting changes as well. So I am looking forward to that. That's going to do it for this playthrough. If you enjoyed what you, uh, if you enjoyed it, uh, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. If you need to contact me, I can be reached at manfromlang at gmail.com. I'm also on Twitter at manfromlang. Until the stars are right, keep your shotgun close and your elder sign closer. Take care out there, and happy investigating.